Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am a little bit late because I was in a meeting, but now we are here. We're just going to have two more sessions. This is the number three, and we are going to have one more tomorrow. That is the last day of this uh, module. So we are going to uh, start. Yes, um, with this session in which we are going to continue with the topics that we have for these days. And also we are going to uh, work on the platform that are the last activities that we have there. We are going to try to have or to complete more activities uh, today to have just a couple of them for tomorrow. In this case, we were working on the Knowledge Check 5.4 yesterday. And now we are going to continue with the information that we have for today. In this case, we are going to begin with a short video in which we're going to listen a pronunciation. This is a part of the pronunciation and we are going to uh, look for the pronunciation of can and can't. Vamos a empezar la sesión de hoy con pronunciación. Es un video corto en el cual nosotros vamos a aprender cómo pronunciar o de qué forma se pronuncia el auxiliar can y el auxiliar can't. Eh, básicamente es para que nosotros sonemos más naturales. It's like to sound more natural when we are pronouncing this kind of uh, words. Simplemente es para eso, ¿verdad? Para que nosotros podamos sonar un poco más naturales a la hora de hablar en inglés. So, we are going to eh, watch the video twice. Vamos a tratar de verlo dos veces para entender cuál es el propósito, ¿verdad? De, este, de esta parte de pronunciación. So, we are going to start with the video and then we are going to continue with the topics that we are going to develop today. So, the first thing is pronunciation. So, pay attention to the information. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn to sound natural when using can and can't. Let's start by listening to the pronunciation of can and can't. Can and can't. Notice the pronunciation of can and can't. I can act, but I can't sing very well. This is a very simple pronunciation. If you notice the positive statement, I can act. Above the word, you can see how that is pronounced. Can, as the pronunciation symbol. On the other hand, the negative statement is pronounced differently. We will pronounce it as can't. Another tip that I would like to mention here is, when it comes to negative statements, which are contracted, we can also follow the simple rule. If there's a contraction which ends in NT, you can think of extending that N. Let me illustrate that. I can't sing very well. This trick can also help with pronunciation. English pronunciation is not an easy topic and it requires a lot of listening and practicing. I would like to encourage you to practice these two simple phrases. Practice by listening and repeating. Do this several times until you feel like it's not difficult for you. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn to sound natural when using can and can't. Let's start by listening to the pronunciation of can and can't. Can and can't. Notice the pronunciation of can and can't. I can act, but I can't sing very well. This is a very simple pronunciation. If you notice the positive statement, I can act. Above the word, you can see how that is pronounced. Can, as the pronunciation symbol. On the other hand, the negative statement is pronounced differently. We will pronounce it as can't. 
Another tip that I would like to mention here is when it comes to negative statements which are contracted we can also follow the simple rule. If there's a contraction which ends in NT you can think of extending that N. Let me illustrate that. I can't sing very well. This trick can also help with pronunciation. English pronunciation is not an easy topic and it requires a lot of listening and practicing. I would like to encourage you to practice these two simple phrases. Practice by listening and repeating. Do this several times until you feel like it's not difficult for you. Okay, in this video, it, you can see that it's very, very short. Uh, in which we have two different uh, statements in which we have the pronunciation of can and can't. And you see that in that case, uh, we have like a very uh, different sound. And also we have something that we need to uh, focus on. And I'm going to show you on the document because I'm going to put the image in which we have the uh, statement and also in which we have a symbols. En las imágenes, eh, eh, en las frases, mejor dicho, de la imagen que les voy a poner, que es parte del video que ya estuvimos viendo, donde aparecen las dos eh, frases, ¿verdad? Una con can't, el, con can, y la otra con can't, hay una serie de símbolos en la parte de arriba de la palabra. Pero para eso voy a ponerles la imagen en el documento para que la veamos eh, mejor y también para poder hacer un pequeño análisis de esto. Porque esa parte es bastante importante para nosotros a la hora de pronunciar las palabras. Let's see. Sí, así se ve bien. Vamos a ver. En este caso ya vemos ahí la pantalla, ¿verdad? Con lo que es la imagen. Entonces, acá. Can and can't. Y tenemos dos eh, partes. I can act, but I can't sing very well. En esta parte tenemos can. El, tenemos como una K, una E al revés y una N. Esos son símbolos fonéticos. In English, we have this kind of uh, symbols in which we are going to follow the sounds that they represent and they are going to help us with the pronunciation because in that case when you read the symbols that are up or above the word you can find that the pronunciation is uh, more understandable and in the other uh, you have more uh, letters or more symbols about the, the word can't can't can can't can can't Entonces, esos símbolos fonéticos que aparecen arriba de eh, las dos, de can y de can't, nos van a ayudar a nosotros a pronunciar las palabras. Eh, hay una serie de símbolos que separados pues tienen un sonido en específico. Ahí se, en, en fonética se enseña, ¿verdad?, cómo se pronuncian esos, esos símbolos o esos sonidos, de qué lado vienen, si se van a hacer desde la garganta, desde el paladar, eh, si es con los labios cerrados, abiertos, si se saca o no la lengua, It's a lot of things. But it is like something uh, very extensive and in that case we need more time to understand the phonetics. No es como que en una sola clase nosotros vamos a entender todo lo que compone la fonética, porque en realidad fonética es un tema bastante extenso, es, un, eh, es de ponerle mucha atención, es de darle tiempo, ¿verdad?, para entender lo que nosotros estamos aprendiendo. A través de la fonética nosotros a, entendemos cómo pronunciar las palabras y a veces nos ayuda más Eh, relacionar los símbolos con las palabras que simplemente tratar de, de leer una palabra así como nosotros la vemos en el lenguaje normal, ¿verdad? Con sus letras y todo eso. En cambio, con los símbolos, si ya nosotros aprendemos cómo suena cada uno de esos, eh, de esas letras, ¿verdad? De esos eh, fonemas, 
it's kind of easy to pronounce the words. Um, when the kids are, are learning to read, when they are like in that process, sometimes they separate the words, they separate like um, two uh, letters to pronounce better the words. Los niños tienen eso de que a veces separan, ¿verdad? Por eh, unidades, donde eh, dos eh, letras, ¿verdad? Unidas suenan como, por ejemplo, la P y la A, es pa, pero hay otros niños, and it's like kind of interesting because I saw a little boy that he um, was learning to read and he was pronouncing the sounds of the, of the words. First, he pronounced the sound or, or make the sound of the letter. And then he um, remember the sounds and make like the union of the sounds and say the word. Él hacía como para la práctica de la lectura, él pronunciaba primero el sonido, o sea, hacía primero el sonido que corresponde a cada una de las letras y luego las unía, como hacer el, el golpe de la P, el R, el, el R, R, R de la R, y así a través de esos sonidos él empezaba a, a, a entender cómo se unía la palabra. So, in that case, it's the same thing with the phonetics, because we need to, to understand the sounds, the different sounds that we have in English and the union of those uh, sounds and uh, how can we make new um, sounds making the union of the whole thing. Pero este solo es una parte para la pronunciación, ¿verdad? Es una pronunciación eh, bastante corta, no es eh, que vamos a seguir hablando sobre la pronunciación de can or can't, sino para hacer como una uh, difference between the sounds, que no es la misma cosa. Now, we were talking about sports, we were talking about seasons, and now we are going to talk, uh, to talk about talent and abilities. Vamos a hablar de talentos y habilidades. In this case, we are going to divide this topic into different parts. We are going to uh, we are going to say or we are going to learn what is an ability, what is a talent, um, and also we are going to see an activity in which we are going to decide what kind of um, talent or ability it is related. Vamos a hacer una actividad donde yo le voy a poner una serie de eh, cosas, ¿verdad? Como actividades que se van a hacer y ustedes me van a ayudar a decidir si son talentos o habilidades, ya sea musicales o artísticas, si son atléticas, técnicas o mecánicas, o si corresponden a otro tipo de habilidades o de eh, talentos. Y luego vamos a hablar de algunas estructuras que tienen que ver siempre con habilidad. So, we are going to begin with the topic of the talent and, and abilities. But give me a moment, I'm going to stop this one. For a moment. After the explanation about the abilities and talents, we are going to see another video that it's called I Can Sing Very Well because this is related to um, asking and answering questions using can for ability. Vamos a utilizar, eh, después de, de la explicación, ¿verdad? De las habilidades y los talentos, vamos a ver otro video donde vamos a ver el, la manera de hacer preguntas y de contestar esas preguntas utilizando el auxiliar can para habilidades y después hacemos el knowledge check. Así que vamos a comenzar con la parte de talent and ability. So the first thing is to know what is an ability. In this case, we have that the ability 
is a talent, a skill, or prophecy in a particular area. Esto habla de talento también. De, se mete la palabra talento porque dice que es un talento, un, una habilidad, eh, o es cuando nosotros somos muy, um, o cuando tenemos como una manera muy buena de desarrollar nuestras, nuestro talento, nuestra habilidad, nuestra imaginación, nuestra creatividad en un área en particular. Ahí está la diferencia. Tiene que ser en un área en particular. In this case, we are going to see some examples about the ability, or in this case, it's just the ability. We are going to see how to form these examples. And we have here, her academic ability is amazing. Her academic ability is amazing. Su habilidad académica es increíble. En este caso, estamos hablando de un desempeño, de un buen desempeño, ¿en qué? En lo académico, es un área específica. Academic ability. And in this case, if we're talking about this kind of abilities, we have academic, we have athletic, reading, Technical, creative, and musical. Entonces, en este caso, cuando estamos hablando de académico, estamos hablando también de something that is related to athletic, es algo de atletismo, algo de, de ser atlético. Reading, that is very... Uh, Like we already know that a reading has to be with something academic because it is like a, a good ability and not all the people feel like uh, they like to read a lot of books because uh, some people find this activity very boring. Ellos encuentran, ¿verdad? Bastante aburrido esto de la lectura. Entonces es una habilidad académica, ¿verdad? También eh, que se aplica al área académica porque no simplemente vamos a leer solo por ser un hobby que nos guste, sino también porque lo vamos a aplicar en el área académica. Something technical that is related to the, part, the academic part, something creative, and something musical. Then we have another example. I have the ability to draw cartoons. I have the ability to draw cartoons. Tengo la habilidad de dibujar caricaturas. That is another ability that we can have. And in these ones is to have or possess. Tener la habilidad o poseer la habilidad en este caso. And the third one, I need to improve. I need to improve my ability to draw. Necesito mejor mi habilidad para dibujar. And in this case, is in, uh, involved the word improve, the word develop and the word increase. Aquí estamos hablando de mejorar, de desarrollar y de incrementar nuestras habilidades. Now, we have uh, the next one that is talent. Aquí vamos a ver a qué se refiere talento. This one are skills that come naturally to a person, making it easier to master the skill.
Okay, in this case, we have like the difference. In this case, you can notice what is the difference between the uh, talent and the ability. In the ability, you have like um, a talent or a skill in a specific or particular area. But the talent is something that comes naturally to a person. And in this case, is making it easier to master the skill. El talento, o en este caso la habilidad, es como la tener, uh, no, no, no le vamos a poner talento o habilidad porque ya estamos hablando de habilidad, entonces sería muy redundante. Eh, we can say that um, es tener como un punto fuerte, un punto favorable en un área en particular, pero el talento se refiere a que esto viene de manera natural. No necesitan estar practicando tanto, sino que ya lo pueden hacer. Y como ya viene de manera natural, entonces lo, lo que va a hacer es que vamos a, a manejar de mejor manera las habilidades. ¿Ya? Esto quiere decir que primero viene el talento, que lo traemos ya, que es nato, y por eso podemos mejorar o podemos a, abarcar mejor las habilidades y hacerlas de una mejor manera. Entonces, aquí es simplemente, si yo ya traigo la, el talento para dibujar, con la práctica yo voy a dominar la habilidad en sí. Okay, in this case, when we're talking about talent, we have uh, some things related to this list. Aquí tenemos una lista de cosas que son consideradas como talentos, que vienen de manera nata con las personas. El primero es drawing, que es el, el proceso de dibujar, ¿verdad? Hay personas que desde siempre tienen esa, ese talento para hacer los dibujos y que con el tiempo solo van mejorando esa, ese talento. Luego tenemos number two, magic trick, que también es considerado un talento el hacer trucos de magia. Playing an, playing an instrument es tocar un instrumento. A veces hay personas que nunca han ido a una clase, ¿verdad? De piano, de guitarra o de algún otro instrumento y pueden tocarlo, ¿verdad? A veces tal vez solo es con escuchar una melodía ya pueden reproducirla en un instrumento. The ability to play multiple instruments. One thing is that you can play one instrument, but there are people that uh, can play different instruments, que pueden uh, tocar múltiples instrumentos, que en muchos de los casos no están relacionados entre sí. Cooking. That is another thing that I consider uh, also as a talent, that is the, uh, the way to cook a very delicious food. No simplemente el hecho de... de de cocinar, sino de darle un toque especial a la comida. También es considerado un talento. Then we have the flexibility. Not all the people have this kind of uh, talent. That is the ability or the flexibility that makes us to can like make different exercises or different things. Singing, that is another talent that is singing. All people can sing, but the thing is that um, sounds 
good, sounds pretty, it sounds like um, interesting to the ears. No simplemente cantar, todos podemos cantar en la cocina, en la ducha o cuando estamos en una fiesta. Es que suene bonito, ¿verdad? Que suene en armonía junto con la música. That is the talent. We have also the ability to be able to speak several languages. This one is also a talent, but when you are like, um, you don't feel like it's a hard thing because you understand different languages and it's easy for you to speak in different languages. It is not just English, it's also Chinese, Japanese, uh, I don't know, different languages and you feel like you are, um, just listening someone is speaking in that language and you feel that like you know what that people is saying. That is the talent. In this case, we can say that in this moment, we are having just uh, an ability because we are trying to master this thing that is to speak in English. But we are just talking about people that feel like very easy for them to speak different languages and they are not complicated for them. Then being good at sports, in all of the sports or many different kind of sports. And this one is very interesting. Good at solving puzzles. Good at solving puzzles. There are people that like to uh, complete puzzles and they begin with a small puzzles and then they have like 1,000 pieces or 3,000 pieces or abstract pieces in which you are going to uh, create like, a, I don't know, lines, butterflies, some animals. Uh, the universe, something like that, that is kind of complicated. Hay personas a las que les encantan, ¿verdad? Estos rompecabezas eh, que empiezan con rompecabezas sencillos, pequeños, de pocas piezas, pero van subiendo de nivel y van empezando con piezas o eh, con rompecabezas que tienen 100 piezas, 200, llegan a, las, a los rompecabezas de 1,000 piezas, o de muchas piezas más, también comienzan con esos eh, puzzles que traen como formas abstractas que no son sus cuadritos normales, ¿verdad? Sino que son como piezas abstractas o que tienen que ver con líneas, con colores, con eh, paisajes complejos. That is kind of um, interesting because not all people, all the people have this talent or this patient. No tienen la paciencia para a resolver estos, estos rompecabezas porque se requiere de tiempo, de habilidad visual también, en la cual podemos detectar un leve cambio de color, de forma, de una sombra. I don't know. It's kind of complicated. I like to make puzzles, but at the same time, I have a, a problem with them. I remember, uh, in this case, I have a puzzle that it has 1,000 1, pieces, I guess, um, but it's kind of heavy uh, because the image of the puzzle is a bunch of butterflies and they have like very specific colors, they're in group, but the pieces are not square, they have a different forms and it's complicated because the group of butterflies, in this case, would you have pink, purple, green, and light blue, I guess. Yes. But the, the group of uh, butterflies has the same color. Tienen el mismo color y van en un grupo. Entonces tienen que encontrar todas las piezas que sean de ese grupo 
Y como son mil piezas de diferentes formas, a veces creen que han encontrado una pieza que encaja con la otra, pero ya no saben para dónde moverse. Entonces es un, un uh, rompecabezas bien difícil por lo mismo de los colores. And I have this kind of very little problem with my eyes in which I can't um, like to see the, the, the lines very well. And when I kind of tired because my eyes get tired uh, very easily, in that case, I can't see anything. And, and it's kind of complicated, but it's funny, it's funny. Now, we have here the examples of talent and ability. And now I'm going to write a list of activities and you are going to help me saying in which category these activities are. Voy a escribir una lista de actividades y vamos a hacer un cuadro donde vamos a ir escribiendo en cuál de las categorías entra cada una de estas actividades. In this case, I have activities and we have the following activities. We have number one, bake a cake. Design a web page. Do a gymnastics. Fix a car. Fix a motorcycle. Paint pictures. Play chess. Play the violin. Ride a horse. Think English songs. Source. Use a computer. Draw well. Is win well. Speak languages. And tell good jokes. Ok, esa es la lista de actividades. Esas actividades las vamos a dividir en la siguiente tabla. I'm going to insert the table. And we have one, two, three, four. Four categories. The first one is musical or artistic. Athletic. Technical or mechanical. And the last one is other. Tenemos cuatro categorías. Musical o artístico, atlético, técnico o mecánico y otros. Estas eh, son actividades que no entran en estas otras tres categorías. Entonces, I'm going to give you five minutes, cinco minutos, para eh, que ustedes piensen en dónde entra cada una de esas actividades. Tenemos bake a cake, que es hornear un pastel. Design a web page, que es hacer una página web o diseñar una página web. Do gymnastic, que es hacer gimnasia. Fix a car, arreglar un carro. Fix a motorcycle, arreglar una motocicleta. Paint pictures, pintar eh, o elaborar eh, cuadros, ¿verdad? En este caso, imágenes. Eh, play chess, jugar ajedrez. Play the violin. 
tocar el violín, ride a horse, es montar a caballo, sing English songs, cantar canciones en inglés, surf, practicar surfing o surf, eh, surfear, use a computer, usar una computadora, draw well, eh, dibujar bien, swim well, nadar bien, speak languages, hablar diferentes idiomas, and tell good jokes, decir bromas muy buenas. Entonces, we have five minutes to um, find which category those words are part of. Vamos a encontrar cuál es la parte, ¿verdad? O la categoría en la que se encuentra. We have five minutes right now. It's 1.38. 1.40. A la 1.43.44 vamos a completar el cuadro con esta información y luego continuamos con lo demás que tenemos programado para hoy.
Okay, let's see uh, the uh, activities that corresponds to every uh, category that we have on the table. In this case, we have musical or artistic. ¿Cuáles de estas actividades corresponden a musical o artístico? Mm -hmm. Painting pictures. Okay, mm -hmm. painting pictures. Draw well. Okay, draw well. Very good. What else? Vamos a marcar las dos que ya dijeron. Por acá. Paint pictures. This one. Y tenemos draw well. ¿Qué más entra en artístico y musical? Sing English songs. Ah, sing English songs. Very good. And maybe tell good jokes. Tell good jokes, yes. But we have something else. Hay algo que no hemos puesto en la parte musical. Play the, play the violin. Ah, very good. Play the violin. Muy bien. Ahora. Atlético. En lo atlético que entra. Hay alguien que puso do, gymnastic. Vamos a poner gymnastic en athletic. Swim well. Ah, swim well. Very good. Surf. Ah, uh -huh. surf. Swim. Well. Tenemos también do gymnastics. Y nos falta algo más. Vamos a mover un poco para arriba para que veamos los que tenemos ahí. Falta una cosa. Ajá. Falta una cosa por ahí, por ahí, por ahí. Que tiene que ver con algo atlético. Ride a horse. Mm. Excellent. Ride a horse. Very good. Now, technical or mechanical? Algo técnico y mecánico. Fix a car. Ah, fix a car. Mm. What else? Uh, fix a motorcycle. Ah, oh, very good. Fix a motorcycle. What else? That is design something... a web page. Ah, very good. Design a web page. Use a computer. Very good. Use a computer. Very good. This is color green and let me see here it's color green. 
So in this case, you can see try, uh, through the colors that we have two different things that um, uh, we can use in others. Tenemos play chess, speak languages, and bake a cake. Que son los que vamos a colocar en others, que entran en otras categorías, ¿verdad? Bake a cake, speak languages. And play chess. Aquí tenemos ya nuestras eh, actividades, ¿verdad? Que corresponden a cada una de estas categorías. Ya tenemos el de musical y artístico. También tenemos el de atlético, que entra en lo atlético, que entra en lo técnico y lo mecánico y que entra en otras categorías, ¿verdad? Diferentes, como lo es la cocina. Así que solo voy a marcar por acá los colores. Uh -huh. And this one is other. Okay. So now it's complete. Now we're going to um, see the video that we have on the platform in which we're going to listen in something related to the use of a canned. In this case, it's questions related to ability. So we're going to listen this one, this information, and we're going to go to the knowledge Hi, check. So let's pay attention. In this class, you'll learn to ask and answer questions using can for ability. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, I can't sing very well. This conversation illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. I can't sing. Oh, look, there's a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can't enter a talent contest. What can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thanks. Well, you can too. Oh, no, I can't sing at all, but I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the contest. Sure, why not? Okay, let's practice tomorrow. Now let's analyze the examples on this chart. Can for ability. I can sing very well. You can sing very well. He can sing very well. She can't sing at all. We can't sing at all. They can't sing at all. Can you sing? Yes, I can. No, I can't. Can I sing? Yes, you can. No, you can't. Can he sing? Yes, he can. No, he can't. Can she sing? Yes, she can. No, she can't. Can we sing? Yes, we can. No, we can't. Can they sing? Yes, they can. No, they can't. What can I do? You can sing. Who can sing? Philip can. I would like to explain the usage of can. We can use can to express some kind of ability, whether that is related to sports, professional, something artistic, or something special. Singing is something that only a few people can do, and most people can't. In my case, I can't sing at all. Let me get started by explaining how to form statements with can. To do this, we can follow this formula. Subject plus can or can't plus the verb plus complement. Now let's analyze a couple of examples. I 
can sing very well. Uh, the subject is I. Then we're going to add can. After that, we have the verb sing. Uh, finally, we have a complement. Let's analyze one more example. She can't sing at all. The subject is she. Then we're going to add can't. After that, we have the verb sing. Finally, we can include a complement at all. Now let's learn how to form questions using can. To do this, we can follow this formula. The auxiliary can plus subject plus the verb plus a complement. Let's analyze a couple of examples to make sure we understand this topic. Can you sing? First, we need to add the auxiliary can. After that, we include the subject. Next, we have the verb sing and a question mark. Finally, we can include a complement. In these examples, there is no complement, but we could add something like at home. These are yes or no questions. So the way to answer this type of questions is quite simple. For the question, can you sing, we can answer positively by saying, yes, I can. And we can answer negatively by saying, no, I can't. Let's analyze one last example. Can he sing? First, we need the auxiliary verb can. After that, we include the subject he. Next, we have the verb sing and a question mark at the end. We can answer positively by saying, yes, he can. And we can answer negatively by saying, no, he can't. Now it's your turn to practice using can and can't. I would like for you to talk about your abilities and the abilities of your friends, family, and co-workers. For example, I can play tennis, but I can't play basketball. Okay, in this video, we have the explanation of the use of can, making questions. In this case, it's not like a um, different topic because we already uh, learned how to use can to make questions. Uh, ya sabemos cómo utilizar el can para hacer preguntas y también cómo podemos responder utilizando can, can't, que también es el negativo. Pero en este caso se basa más que todo en las habilidades. Eh, aquí nosotros metemos nuestras habilidades y podemos utilizarlo para hacer preguntas, así como aparece ahí. He can sing very well. Él puede cantar muy bien. Y en las preguntas, obviamente, solo cambiamos el auxiliar. Can he sing? Puede él cantar. And we have different answers. Yes, he can. No, he can't. Pero es, like, uh, es como un review, ¿verdad? De la información que ya tenemos sobre el can y el can't. Now, we're going to complete the knowledge check number eh, 5.9. Es el 5.9. Vamos a completarlo en estos minutos que nos quedan de sesión para que solo nos quede un knowledge check para mañana y el examen final, ya que mañana es la última sesión del módulo. So, we're going to see, in this case, it said, Gabriela is talking about things she can and can't do. Complete the sentences following the examples. Aquí, Gabriela está hablando de las cosas que ella puede y no puede hacer. Entonces, vamos a completar las oraciones siguiendo este ejemplo. I can't draw. Ella no puede cantar. Pero ella dice, I can or can't 
Sing. Aquí nosotros vamos a ir viendo, ¿verdad? ¿Puede o no puede cantar? Eh, en este caso, ¿puede o no puede actuar? That is the number two. She can or can't act. Can. can. Okay. She can. She can. can. Okay. Yeah. I can act. Very well. Number three. I can or can't sing. She can't. Ah, okay. Can't. Mm. Okay. It's very like this. Uh, she can or can't fix cars. She can. Okay, can. Very well. Then we have number five. She can or can't play tennis. She can play tennis. Can, okay. Then we have I can or cannot ice skate very well. Okay, can't. Very good. Then we have, I can play the piano or I can't play the piano. Can or can't. Okay, can, very good. Then we have, I can cook at all or can't. Ah, thank you. Can't. Let's see the answers. Let's check. Okay, they are correct. Very good. So in the number two, can. Number three, can't. Number four, can. Number five, can. Number six, can't. Number seven, can. Number eight, can't. Okay, very good. Excellent job. So we are going to end the session, but remember that if you are not working on the platform or if you have activities that you are not completed to this day, you need to work on them because tomorrow is the last day of this course and you need to have completed all the activities on the platform. Si no han completado las actividades, tienen que ponerse al día, ya mañana es la última sesión. Así que mañana ya tienen que quedar completas las cinco secciones de la plataforma más el examen final. Mañana vamos a estar realizando el último knowledge check de la sección 5 y vamos a estar realizando también el examen final para los que no han podido completarlo. Lo pueden completar junto a mí en la sesión de mañana. Así que vamos a terminar la sesión acá. We are going to see each other tomorrow in the last session of this module. So have a really good day and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.